Hi everyone, it's me, Beata Kelly Sunflower. So I thought I'd hop on today and do a part two of the Metamythical Cannabis Oracle deck. So my first video is just basically a flip through and first impression. And normally if I'm going to like review a deck, I, I normally like to, um, you know, do a deck interview and stuff. And, and then actually work with the cards for a few weeks. So this second part of this review should have been my deck interview. But unfortunately, I was hit with challenges. And um, so I'm just going to um, let you know <laughs> what those were. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a deck interview um, because I, I, I was just confused with the explanations of the cards in the guidebook it didn't align to my understanding um also as well i would like it if people don't get radical um in the comments of this video um in my previous video which was my unboxing um one of my friends um mentioning no name said that he was having problems understanding the deck and he kind of got bashed by somebody and I, I don't want that if you know this I don't want black white that this is this is not my culture isn't you know this that and the other because at the end of the day the the person who wrote the deck in my opinion is coming from an American culture yeah even though she makes associations um to having um Native American um teachings passed down to her she's still doing this deck from an American perspective, in my opinion. So anyway, as I read the guidebook um, and I was quite, well, I, I read the guidebook, um, not the cards per se, but what I, what I read in the guidebook was the introduction, um, you know, um, understanding of the deck, you know, how to understand the deck, the origins of the deck, and the co-creation of the deck and the work of the deck and i'm a bit confused because the creator maggie may on page eight of the book let me see if i can find it and read it out to you i was fortunate to have all these rituals and aristoric teachings passed down to me from my elders within the Lakorata La and Cherokee tribes. And I've learned from other cultures, including the Mayan, Korean, Egyptian, and my homeland of Nigeria. Because there are so many diverse teachings, I only began to scratch the surface of my depth of knowledge from these ancestors. So what? So how I'm interpreting that is that she got majority of her work from um, her Native American um, tribe and she has scratched the surface of Mayan, Korean, Egyptian and Nigerian. And she mentions that she's from Nigerian ancestry, but she doesn't say what Nigerian tribe. The author also says that she's just scratched the surfaces. So I think this is just basically a multicultural kind of deck um, I, I can't see, um, not that I'm bashing her because it's a beautiful deck, but I, it doesn't look like it was researched properly, um, homeland of Nigeria, but it, it, it doesn't say what part, I would, I would have liked to have known what, her, what, what country in Nigeria, because you know Nigeria is quite a big country, it's bigger than the whole of the United Kingdom anyway, and it's got several different tribes in there. So that's one thing that I found a bit confusing. Um, and also as well, um, the, the whole kind of cannabis, um, kind of ethos, you know, this that was published by Eliminal Eleven, which is a very good publisher, but in the UK, um, where these publishers are from, so, um, Darren and Kay are actually from the UK, they live in the UK, in the UK, um, cannabis is illegal and it's classified as a class B drug. Um, 
in 2004 it was made into a class c drug that had less penalties but then back in but then back in 2009 it was back to a class b so it's an illegal drug yeah so i'm quite surprised that they published this um i don't know what the um what the drug classification is in the in the american states but i know that um in nigeria you know even though nigeria is, is one of the largest growers of cannabis it is still illegal for cultiv for um for cultivation um respiration and medicinal use it's illegal in nigeria and also even though i don't live in nigeria because sometimes you know if you don't live in a country you miss the changes my dad did used to always say to me that how um cannabis smokers in nigeria were mostly the local area boys the local area boys are like gangs you know just like gangs and they, they run certain parts of nigeria um and stuff and um I remember that Fela Kuti used to also um, be, you know, like a heavy cannabis smoker. Um, he he said that um, it heightened his sex life. I don't know if he was doing it for cultural reasons or just that he liked to be high. And I do remember Paul McCartney. Um, he went to Nigeria in the sixties to record one of his to record one of his um, records, and he did say that he met Fela and he smoked the strongest ever weed. In his life, um, my dad used to also. My dad also told me as well, growing up, that um, fellow Kuti followers were a bit were a bit on the rough side because I know, growing up as a child, a lot of the older people of my dad's age who would probably be in their nineties now, most of them have passed on. They either liked Sunny Addy, Addy, he was more conservative, or fellow Kuti that was more radical. The fellow Kuti followers used to have their hair in Camo going back. And um, they used to also smoke a lot of cannabis. But um, also in this book, it doesn't mention the other um, cultural names that are used in Nigeria um, for cannabis. So, for example, um, Keya, Wiwi, Igbu, Oja, Ganga, Blue, Popoli. Abana, Indian hem. These are all other kind of names that, that are used in Nigeria to describe um, cannabis. And as this, as the author says that Nigeria is, is her homeland, I would have expected those sort of names to be put into the book. Somebody left a comment, um, you know, in my in my first video, um, to my friend saying that how he he might have been struggling with the deck because he was Caucasian but my argument is historically cannabis has been associated with the Celts gener generic people and hippies who are all Caucasian as well as as well as um Central Asia and Africa so I, I, I thought that was a bit wrong for that person to just assume that um cannabis is just a black drug um my father's Nigerian and Cannabis was never smoked in my house. I think the only time I actually became aware of cannabis was through my Rastafarian friends in the UK. So, I, you know, but I also know hippie people that smoke cannabis, new age people that smoke cannabis, you know, people that have got like um, arthritis and, st and, you know, and st stuff like that. They smoke cannabis to help ease the pain. So I don't want this to be made into a black and white thing. Cannabis is not just for black people. Anyway, so moving back to this deck, so I, so I've slept with this deck. I always greeted my decks when I first get them. I slept with the deck, um, for a couple of nights. Yeah, I've 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 saged my well not saged. I like, I prefer to use palisante, so I've used palisante to cleanse my deck, and I wanted to do a deck interview for this deck. Um, for my oracle decks, I normally have um, five questions that I like to use. The first question is, tell me about your energy. Um, second one, what are your strengths as a deck? Third one, what are you here to teach me? Fourth question is, how can I work with you best? And fifth question was, potential outcome of our working together. That's what I wanted to ask this deck before I went to the second part of my review, which was working with the cards. But... Every time I shuffled this deck, the cards kept on jumping out um, and, and everything. So 
anyway, so I did have five cards. So I've got three of them here. So the first card um, that I had um, that for like for question one was Nana Baruku. And it's got essence here. I do, I do like the artwork of this deck. Very, you know, full-figured, beautiful woman. I love the quarry shells and stuff around her. Now, my first question is, tell me about your energy, yeah? Now, when I went into the guidebook, because I also wanted to, like, see um, what the guidebook had to say. And one thing I can say about the guidebook is that the um, subject index made it very easy for me to, re to retrieve the card. So it says for Nana Baruka, it's all in alphabetical order. So it says for Nana Baruka, page 92. So it was quite easy for me to find the the commentary on Nana Baruka. But what it says here is um, she's the grandmother and keeper of the original oracles for the Fon people in Africa. And that threw me because the Fon people are normally based in Benin Republic, which is different to the Benin country in Nigeria. And they don't follow the Arisha religion, you know, even though that country is ma mainly Christian based, yeah, they also have their own um, traditional religion. So that kind of threw me off and I was unable to complete um, this deck interview, um, but I will persevere. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to say in parts, in, in my flip through, um, but, I, but I was too scared to say it just in case. I got bashed was the witch witch doctor card i think this is the equivalent of the um high priestess in the traditional tarot deck um in this deck it's part of the meta arcana that makes up the major arcana now the term witch doctor to be quite honest pisses me off i'm sorry to use french because it's it's not a nice. I, I find it quite a derogatory term. But then this is this is my own personal opinion. I don't want people to start saying, "Oh, it's 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 um, derogatory to use that term." In my personal opinion, I don't like that word. I would have preferred um, the term traditional healer. You know, a traditional healer is a person who does not have any medical training, but is considered by the local community as being competent to um, practice, um, you know, healing through herbs, you know, animal, you know, plant or mineral kind of items. That's what I would have, I would have preferred that card to be called. I tried to do some of the spreads since I couldn't do my um, deck interview spread. I thought, okay, let me try a spread from this book and, you know, show it on this video. So the spread that I was trying to do was the Chakra Star System Alignment Spread. And it's it says make sure that each suit is separated and draw seven cards as follows. And it gives you the seven cards to draw out from the suit. But my issue is, is that how once these cards have been shuffled, yeah. Let me put these back into the suit. So once these cards have been shuffled it's really hard to tell what suit it belongs to like for example this one what suit does it belong to i would have preferred if it had the name of the suits there with the card and then a title down the bottom because you because i can't tell what suit is what like for example now i do remember this being the empress in the Meta Arcana suit, but looking at it as a collective, you cannot tell what suit belong, what card belongs to what suit. So I don't want to bash the creators, um, but so far I'm finding this deck a little bit challenging to work with. Yep, so what I'm going to do is, you know, I can't do my deck spread because I don't understand some of the meanings that are in the guidebook. Um, so I've just come on to give me, you a mini review of the guidebook and the challenges I faced trying to do my deck interview spread. So I'm, I'm now going to try and work with the cards for another three weeks and I will maybe hop on again and do a third review of how I found working with the cards.
So be kind in your comments. You are entitled to give your opinion, but please don't think that your opinion is the only opinion as that's the whole point of discussion and debate that we have different opinions and we learn from each other. So thank you so much for watching my video. I will leave a link to this video in the description bar and hopefully I'll see you for my third video. Bye for now.